Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have updated the Chandrayaan 2 I previously had in my real spacecraft pack, which didn't load properly for reasons I'll explain in a second, and turned it into Chandrayaan 3, which recently launched to the moon and will arrive on August 14th, I believe. Now, I never had the rover for the mission. That you'll have to cook up yourself. This is just the lander with the ramp and the engines and the propulsion stage. It's no longer an orbiter. For Chandrayaan 2, this was an orbiter stage that did science at length. In this case, now it is just a propulsion stage that will get it to finish the transfer to the moon, get it into orbit around the moon, and then the lander will do the rest. And the lander has plenty of propellant, it has four engines, each with 800 newtons, and the propulsion stage, well I made it an 800 newton engine, throttleable down to 400 newtons, but I think it's just supposed to be a 400 newton engine, but if you use it like that, you'll take three hours. Now, it that's fine for them because they do the boost to the moon in multiple orbits. So they use it a little, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. Uh, so the three hour burn time is not a problem in that case, but it'll probably drive most people crazy. So yeah, uh, I've made it the same thrust as these, but that just cuts it down to an hour and a half or so. Uh, you can tweak the configuration file and change the thrust as you see fit if you want it to be faster. I give you permission. So, because this was based on an older model of mine, the Chandrayaan 2 was one of my earliest models, uh, it wasn't particularly good. And in particular, the leg deployment isn't exactly right. Um, I don't have all the details, of course, but I did update the textures, and so there's that. And I changed the solar panels so that they are uh, looking a little bit more correct. And yeah, overall it's spiffier looking. Uh, and perhaps a little bit more functional, but it's not perfect. I'll definitely agree with that. And somehow I've got these landing leg bits sticking out. Anyway, it's complicated. Uh, so I was trying to mess with a model that I should have probably just started from scratch. So <laughs> let's just put it that way. But for now, it'll be all right. And it'll be part of the real spacecraft pack. And unlike the Chandrayaan 2, it will actually load. The reason that the Chandrayaan 2 didn't load past versions, uh, past version 1.8.1 is because the game no longer likes having an animation that's not the solar panel on a solar panel part. So if I, on the previous Chandrayaan 2, I had built the solar panels into the body of the lander and I still had the leg animation and it didn't like that, so it didn't load it. Uh, now the solar panels are separate, so now it's fine. And yeah, there are other quirks like that, uh, including the orbiter module previously had the decoupler built in, but now the propulsion module, the, the adapter is separate so that the decoupler is separate because it doesn't like having the decoupler on the same module as the engine module. So decouplers don't go with engine modules, other animations don't go with the solar panel module, and that's how it is. Uh, the only animation you can have is the animation for the solar panels. So, yeah. And the ramp is, of course, separate too. The reason I don't have the rover, I don't have a rover. And the reason I don't have a rover because I don't know how to do wheels. Um, I haven't done wheels before or suspension. I'll do that at some point. Maybe uh, between now and when they land, I'll figure it out. And maybe I'll make a little rover for it. But you're on your own as far as the rover is concerned right now. You'll probably need a radi radial attachment point uh, or something like that to mount it and decouple it off. Or you could use a docking port uh, to decouple it off. And you'll need tweak scale to get the rover small enough. So basically this is five parts and you can find them by typing in Chandrayaan. I'll link the real spacecraft pack which will include this but also other real spacecraft that I have in that pack. Um, and this will be one of those things. The Chandrayaan 2 will be removed because it didn't work anyway. Uh, and this should be about the right mass with the rover. Uh, it should be close to 3.9 tons it's supposed to be. It's not exactly exactly, uh, but uh, that's just a matter of like ounces of propellant or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what I have wrong, but uh, it's pretty darn close to the real thing. And um, this might be a little bit lighter. Well, with the rover, it'll be closer, but 
uh, it might be a little bit lighter than it's supposed to be. I think uh, in terms of if we're missing mass, it's probably dry mass in the lander. So it's probably better if I don't add it for people trying to use this because it'll be tough to land like that. So this is our delta V situation. And what you can conclude from this is that well, we know that the GSLV Mar 3 is going to have to boost it pretty far. And you see the one hour and 45 minute burn time right now. And that's, you know, with a slightly cheaty engine. Um, it's got boosted pretty high up. I believe the initial orbit that boosts it up to was like 45,000 or something like that. Let me double check. Um, 41,762 kilometers. So that's the initial orbit. Then it goes to 51,000, 71,000 and so forth. Um, and we have the GSLV Mark II that is part of the real rockets pack. I'll link that in the video description as well. And we will see how this works, but I will not do the landing. I don't want to jinx it. So uh, putting it together is just the lander has the engines on it. Then, uh, well, anyway, the ramp goes on the front. The solar panels, uh, there's a node inside the lander at the center that they will attach to. Uh, the adapter on the bottom and then the propulsion module below that and that's as simple as that the engines are integrated this time unlike with the Chandrayaan 2 for the GSLV Mark 3 you can just type GSLV with the real rockets pack installed it doesn't have the payload adapter that's just a generic payload adapter that I use it's for my small rockets pack and tweet scaled up it's got the payload fairings, uh, the upper stage, so put the upper stage on first once you have the payload, uh, payload adapter, and then you put the fairings onto the upper stage, uh, then the C20 engine is in here. Make sure that you get the node that has the top of it showing, otherwise you're taking up the node that the first stage attaches to. There isn't any RCS on this stage, and as far as I know, uh, the burn is done directly. So I think it's just one burn with the CE20 to push it to the target apoapsis. And it doesn't reignite for that. Okay, and then the first stage attaches there and we have two of the Vicus engine or HPVE-1. And so there are two there. And then we have just, I didn't put any, didn't create any special decouplers for the boosters. So I'm just using the stock decouplers, but we have the boosters. And then I've put some separatrons, my preferred separatrons. So you'll have to find your own particular one. Uh, so if I was to update this, I would probably add custom decouplers for those. But everything is as you see it and we are going to try to launch it. I'm not going to try and land it, but we'll just test everything to make sure it's working right. Okay, so we are here at Sadesh Dawan, the Indian Space Center, and I'm not at the right timing for launch because this is not a replica launch. I'll do that some other time. We are going to time it so that the moon, basically they take uh, one and a half orbits of the moon in order to get there, which means you want to start with the moon on the opposite side of where you intend on meeting up with it. And so that is where we are right now. And it's just a matter of getting the right timing for the launch. They go into a 21.3 degree inclination. We're starting off at a 13.7 degree, degree inclination, so we'll have to go a little bit south of east. Okay, here we go. And it's off. So it only lights the SRBs initially. And then the script hopefully has the right timing for the core ignition. Okay, the core has ignited. And I would have thought that the booster separation was timed, but... Oh, yeah, okay. I guess they hold on to it for a bit longer. Off they go. Them seem a little bit small on this now. I don't know what's happened to those. I'll have to double check that. Ah, it failed to release the fairings. Off they go. 
Well, the payload is very shiny, so it's reflecting the darkness around right now, unfortunately. Okay, upper stage ignition. Let's see if it gets us to where we need to go. Okay, we've made orbit. Uh, to be honest, this stage could probably do more than we're asking of it. Alright, it has concluded. A little bit past the target, but with 333 meters per second to spare, so no problems. And let us... Well, throttle us down. Let's separate and then go in daylight. It is off. The way it is right now, all of our burns will be do, uh, done on the nighttime side, so we're, we're not going to do that. Uh, we are going to just test the engines right now so that I can know that everything is all right for viewers and then I'll do uh, a different version with the accurate date and all that business uh, some other time closer to when they actually land. So I want to get the orientation for the sunlight. So as you can see the bottom thrusters are doing their thing. Now, due to various issues with how solar panels work, I can't figure out how to get a sun catcher module on every single solar panel on the lander. So the most functional solar panel is this one, the big one, which is on the same side as the solar panel on the propulsion module. So as long as you've got those pointing at the sun, that's going to work out. And I generally go sun forward force roll 90, in order to keep that right, like so. And you can see that we are recharging right now. Plenty of charge. Uh, I've copied the configuration of Chandrayaan-2 that I had before, and I think that was accurate, and I had found information, and it still should be good for this version, uh, even though they've changed things. Among the things that they've changed is Chandrayaan-2 had five engines on the lander. This has four. They, they took off the center engine deciding that they didn't need it. They took off a lot. Uh, the um, orbiter had an extending solar panel. Now it just has a flat one. So those are things that were changed. I'm just going to go prograde here and check the engine out. Yeah. Unless we're doing it legit legit with all the bells and whistles, I don't want to do a 1 hour and 45 minute burn. <laughs> so... Even though I'm, that's cheating, it's supposed to be three hours. I don't want to do it right now. We're just going to check where it works. Okay. The plume might need to be a little bit smaller. But it's doing what it's supposed to do as far as our orbit and all is concerned. The orbital speed is decreasing because we're going up. But you can see our orbit is increasing. And orbital period is increasing. So that works fine. And then the separation. That seems nice and clean. And then this module's RCS thrusters. Um, the bomb might be a little bit too shiny. It was white well looking. The bomb was white looking. Right now it's a little bit shiny because it's picking up the shininess that I put for the gold foil. I could separate that off and tell it to make the bottom more flat because it looked like a flat white. But all right. The landing gear doesn't operate with G unless you action group that. So that's not automatic, but that works. And then the ramp, of course, we saw also can work, but we're not going to leave it out right now. I didn't get a good look on exactly what texture the ramp had. This seemed okay. Okay, and then the engine. Engines. So there's four of them combining for three... Um, 3.2 kilonewtons and what that gives you is oops, what that gives you is 0.22 thrust weight ratio now the moon's gravity is 0.16 so you're going to have to be careful with the landing uh, so keep that in mind but it's certainly doable at 13 minutes of burn time it's gonna land a lot like the lunar module from Apollo and much less like some other quicker landers might so yeah and then of course you have to put the rover in all right so this has been a test of this just to make sure it's working properly it seems to we can go back to the orientation before it should still it's been recharging anyway and it should stay charged 
and I'll link the real spacecraft mod in its uh, fixed form in the video description along with the GSLV Mark III in the real rockets pack. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.